I'm listening to a book right now called Training in Compassion by Norman Fisher. And while I'm not impressed with the book so far, it's made me think a great deal about compassion and it's helping me to better define compassion in terms that I think are the most relatable. Because you've got a lot of people talking about compassion in ways that I don't think are clear enough or grounded enough for people to do anything with, so they remain conceptual. And my goal in the work that I do is to always take concepts and plant them into solid ground, to plant them in the earth and to see what grows and then to tend it, uh, rather than speaking concepts to each other, thinking that we are sharing wisdom. And why I bring that up now is that as I've studied and practiced and coached, compassion has evolved for me. And in my first book, A Compassionate Approach, I talk about getting in the water uh, and the water being the suffering, the story, the world that the person you're trying to help is immersed in. Getting into their world rather than standing on the beach and preaching or teaching, uh, you're reaching, you're getting in the water and reaching the person. But when I wrote that book in 2016, to me at that time, compassion was simply about reaching to the person, putting out your hand, showing them you're safe, and then guiding them to shore. Because I thought shore was the place that they needed to be. Because from my perspective, in my world, that's the safest, most effective place. But what I'm recognizing now is that we each experience the world in a different way. And that my beach might be their water, and their water might be my beach. That what one person suffers in the midst of, another person enjoys and celebrates, or will fight for. So my idea of compassion now, and my idea of reaching, is not to bring someone to a place that I think is safe, to a place that I think is dry. And when I mean dry, I simply mean that you're not haunted by narratives. Rather than guiding them to what I think they should do, and being an ideologue of sorts, my goal now is to simply model safety, model groundedness in the midst of their story, in the midst of the world that they experience. So rather than telling them to leave their world, I'm getting in their world and showing them how to be okay in their world, in their midst, in their water. So I'm not getting in in order to get them out. I'm getting in to show them that even in this water, even in this world, you can be grounded, you can be safe, you can find joy, you can see opportunity. And it's not about denying their story or saying, oh, it's an illusion, don't worry, it's just a story that your brain is making up. That may be true, but that's not helpful to someone that believes that it's the world, that believes that it's their identity, that experiences it as true. Uh, it doesn't help to tell someone that it's not true. And this is one of the first things that psychotherapists learn is never to tell a quote-unquote patient that they're crazy. Uh, that doesn't go over well. So I mention this because I'm having a larger conversation about compassion with uh, some of the people that I work with and how it's so easy to be righteous and certain that your beliefs are not just true, but the most effective. And they lead to the greatest success with the least amount of suffering. And from your perspective, it, it seems like that is the real world and that is uh, objective reality. But we all value different things. And someone else's values may not align with ours. So what I'm presenting to them may not take their values into consideration. In fact, 
what I'm saying or presenting may actually diminish their values and saying, why would you value that? That's a stupid thing to value. Why is that important to you? Why are you so focused on that? That's dumb. Here, this stuff over here is much better. So more and more, I'm beginning to recognize that compassion is about allowing someone to be where they are and showing up in their life as a safe space and modeling what it looks like to be, I don't want to say functional, but grounded, I think. Grounded in the midst of groundlessness, as the Buddhists might say. The Buddhists, what does that mean? Pema Chodron has said that. Let's just stick with her. Forget about this, the Buddhists. Nonsense. Anyway, so show them that you can ground yourself in groundlessness. There's always ground to be found. So, for me now, compassion is about adding things to people's lives rather than taking things away. So, going back into the earlier metaphor about getting in the water and bringing someone to dry land, I'm trying to take away the water. I'm trying to take away their experience of drowning or struggle. And that seems like the compassionate thing to do, like my goal is to end their suffering. But I can't try to drag them into my perspective to end their suffering. So instead, I'm adding to the world that they inhabit. I'm adding to the world that they recognize. I'm not invalidating what they're saying about their world. I'm not invalidating their struggle or their story. I'm just adding more to it. I'm painting a greater picture of the world for them, next to them, and showing them that even in the midst of the world they inhabit, there is possibility and there is a way to be in the midst of that story, of that world, and not to suffer. And that's always available if you choose it. So more and more, to me, compassion is not about reaching someone in order to take them somewhere else. It's about reaching someone to show them something else that they can already relate to. So those are a few thoughts to play around with. And uh, I'll see you soon.